purpose of the Flick Reedy Education Enterprises is to promote individual moral responsibility through education. How do we do this? We study and discuss the interrelationships of history, philosophy, social studies, and economics. We do not dictate. We do not make statements as to what we think you should or should not do. We do not unduly burden this program with footnotes, references, or complete documentation. However, we do give sufficient data to bring this discussion into proper focus. We invite you to delve further into the necessary historical and statistical data to develop a deeper understanding of truth and a keener sense of individual moral responsibility. How long is the lifetime of a nation? What would you say? Let's put it this way. What is the lifespan of nations which have reached a pinnacle of wealth and power? Actually, we're primarily interested in our own United States and its future. We are by far the most productive peacetime nation in history. In wartime, we have produced more armament than all the rest of the world combined. The American standard of living is twice as high as that of any major European nation. We send more boys and girls to high school and college than any other nation in the world. Nowhere on earth is there manifested a stronger spirit of sharing. In no other country does the individual citizen have such freedom as we enjoy. Looking at history, we see in perspective the rise and fall of nations. Why? so we can work to prevent in our country those conditions which led to the downfall of others. Does this look like a silhouette of the Rocky Mountains? Really, it's a graph of the rise and fall of nations that achieved greatness. Let's go back to 4,000 years before Christ, the nation that stood at the pinnacle at the dawning of recorded human history was old Babylon in Asia. Its capital city is said to have been built by Nimrod, grandson of Noah. Babylon was a monarchy, a kingdom. For several hundred years, its culture advanced. Its kingdom expanded from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea. Some of Babylon's contributions to modern civilization were astronomy, astrology, the duodecimal system of numbers, measures of length and weight, the sundial, and an early form of the calendar. Why didn't Babylon survive? Why did this leader of the ancient world crumble and fall? History shows that the major causes were a breakdown of moral standards, oppressive and dishonest taxation, and fighting among the politicians for power. These so weakened Babylon internally that it became easy prey for external attacking forces. Can we learn from this? The second empire to take the center of the world stage was ancient Egypt. It dominated Africa, but politically it dominated the whole world of its day, as had old Babylon. It had the fertile delta of the great Nile River, an almost unlimited opportunity to expand under the great pharaohs, the most famous of whom was Khufu, who built the great pyramid of Giza, almost 3,000 years before Christ. Egyptian cultural achievements were notable in astronomy, mathematics, medicine, and the arts. They achieved an eternal place in architectural history with the building of the great pyramids. But ancient Egypt, greatest in its time decayed from within. Factions fighting among themselves finally destroyed the government. Northern barbarians invaded and subdued her with ease. Existing civilization was swept away and the progress of mankind again stopped. Next upon the world stage was Assyria and in its time it became ruler of all Western Asia. Its Semitic tribes were great traders and merchants. Assyrian art and industry reached high stages of development. The world's first roads were built. Aqueducts and canals for irrigation were constructed. Cotton was first used for the making of garments. A postal system was inaugurated. Money was coined. In general, a great future seemed in prospect. In Assyria, the government became too big. It was a monarchy and gradually intensified its regimentation of its people in taxes and controls. A crushing burden of Assyrian tribute on all subject states fostered discontent. Wars sapped the economic strength and overtaxed wealth-producing enterprises. Revolts began. Finally, assault by Indo-Europeans led to the fall of Assyria and the destruction of Nineveh, its glittering capital. Assyria never rose again. Even Assyrian speech was lost. 
ancient Egypt regained world prominence in the era just preceding the birth of Christ. A new dynasty of Egyptian kings conquered nation after nation. Art and architecture reached new heights of achievement. Literature and science progressed. The people of the Nile attained the most prosperous and magnificent standard of living in all history up to this time. Again, internal decay set in. People were living too much off the bounty extracted from conquered nations. Autocratic rule and oppressive taxation of subject people created problems and grave unrest. Foreign invaders overran the weakened empire about 1150 B.C. And for nearly 1,000 years, Egypt as a nation did not exist. Other nations arose in Asia Minor, notably New Babylon, Phoenicia, and the Persian Empire. These, however, were comparatively short-lived. It was on the continent of Europe that the most significant civilization in the millennium before Christ was to spring forth. First of these was ancient Greece. It is to Greece that the modern world owes many of its concepts of both democratic and totalitarian governments. Of the various city-states, Sparta and Athens gained historical prominence. Spartan government early took the form of a police state. Children were regarded as belonging to the state and were raised to be warriors first. All citizens were required to eat at public and common tables. Every citizen was required to contribute to these common meals. Sparta's armies ruled the surrounding populations tyrannically. The government lived off slave-worked lands, and from heavy taxes it squeezed from its subjects. Their way of life represented the way of the past, with privileges only for a few. Athens, on the other hand, represented the future and the rights of many. Athens overthrew the power of its king, and later even eliminated the rule of the nobility. A constitution was written about 600 B.C., giving all free men the right to vote and hold office, and setting up a system of self-government. Great achievements were recorded in Greece's era of individual freedom. The incomparable Parthenon, at the height of its beauty, placed the Greeks among the world's greatest artists and architects. Ancient Greece fell, however, when moral and governmental decay set in among the city-states. These states lost their sovereignty to an imperialistic and bureaucratic Athens, which took heavy taxes and tribute. Under Alexander, Greece became a monarchy. Upon his death, the remnants of a once great nation wrangled and warred on each other, becoming submissive prey for a rapidly rising new power, Rome. Rome, with its colorful emperors, such as Julius Caesar, Diocletian, Augustus, and Nero, made the gaudiest splash on world history and ruled the world unchallenged for centuries. For a time, Rome provided a measure of freedom for its people under the great Roman laws and its modified republic. The peace of Rome, Pax Romana, prevailed. But Rome decayed, morally and politically. When politicians sought to perpetuate themselves in office by offering bribes to the people in the form of subsidies and handouts, the people slowed down in their industry and initiative. The economic strength of its empire began to dissipate. Bread and circuses became a slogan in a decadent Roman Empire. It meant that the government was guaranteeing its people bread and entertainment at the Colosseum Games, the circuses. Those people who accepted the subsidies in time became dependent on the rest. Indifferent politicians and a large bureaucracy imposed grievous burdens on citizens who rapidly lost their zeal for their nation. Large landowners squeezed out small farmers who succumbed to debasement in the cities. Business declined at a time when Rome needed economic strength. So, weakened internally and fraught with revolution and barbarian raids, Rome fell before her enemies. It was more than the defeat of a country. A way of life had been destroyed. A period called the Dark Ages was ushered in. A thousand years passed before the modern world came into being, before civilization recovered from the fall of the mighty Roman Empire. Thus, we see in this brief review of history that no nation which has attained world leadership has ever stayed there long. Although there are numerous causes for the downfall of nations, three are basic. Moral, political, and economic decay. In ancient history, and in our own history, freedom has been mankind's greatest dynamo of progress, the foundation of human decency and national strength. But it has been a fragile thing. 
freedom has not lived long on the world stage at any period of history. Moral, political, and economic decay always seem to set in to achieve a nation's collapse. The lesson we have learned here is that there have been great nations throughout history. They had become leaders of the world, but that all of them decayed and fell because their citizens failed to protect individual freedom, failed to maintain political and economic independence, and failed to grow in moral strength. Where does our nation stand today? What of the present generation of Americans? Will we do our part to protect individual freedom and our free institutions? Each generation must secure and pass on the civil and economic liberties which have made America so great. Will we grow in moral strength, maintain political and economic independence? Or will we stand at the pinnacle for a few years, then take our place beside Egypt, Greece, Rome, and other fallen civilizations? It would be nice if we knew the answer. But only time has the answer to these important questions, which affect all of us so mightily. There is one truism which we should remember in connection with the story of the fall of nations. Those who will not learn from the mistakes of the past are condemned to repeat them.